Hola, Lights Out Faithful, my amigos, if you will. We are so glad you're tuning into this episode, and we are so glad that we can let you know about another iconic tournament taking place on July 13th through the 14th. Smash Factor is back, or S Factor as they're going by now, in Mexico City at the World Trade Center. Registration is already open, so make sure you head over to Start GG to show them some support. And the event is free. There's like $50,000 USD up for grabs, so why wouldn't you want to be a part of that? You know, the whole Lights Out crew will definitely be pulling up to Mexico. Follow them on Smash Factor MX if you want to keep up to date with updates. And of course, check out their Twitch channel as well, Smash Factor Gaming. Going to be a lot of stuff there. Not just Smash as well. Other traditional fighters will be gracing the screen along with in-person events that will definitely leave you entertained. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome to an episode of Lights Out your boy E.E. E. Cosmos is episode 59, sponsored by our friends over at Prize Picks. Make sure you download the Prize Picks app and use code Lights Out. You get a hundred dollar match of your first deposit. And we'll get more into that momentarily. But Cosmos, as everybody notices right now, as they always ask, E.E., e., where is light? You promised light would be on this episode. And let me tell you something. I did because I had history on my side, chat. I'm going to explain to you what I mean by that. I had history on my side. Light, up until a few days ago, had won back-to-back -back Momocons. So history told me, well, he's going to win a third one. No doubt about it. The competition was still tough, but no tougher than what he faced at Level Up Expo where he won that tournament. And I was like, well, of course, he's going to want to come on the podcast to gloat, even if it has to be from his car. You know what happened, though? You know what was the one wrinkle in my plan? His ass didn't win Momocon. Boy, didn't he come close, unfortunately. It hurts to say I don't say it with any joy. Uh, I say it with pain because we want our boy to do well. But uh, unfortunately, he took an L. And to your question for where light is, honestly, I don't think either of us could tell you because as soon as he lost, he disappeared from the face of the planet. Like he was out the venue. I didn't see him the rest of the weekend. So, yeah. Yeah. He did make himself scarce. Uh, also tweeted out, I need a break. So maybe this homeless thing is actually starting to catch up to him. And as his good friends, we should stop making jokes about it and take his well-being a little bit more serious. But. Yeah. That's not what people tune in for. Tough break, nigga. Suck it up. Anyway, with that said. Find a house, your gym. Exactly, bro. Get up out that cardboard box and get active, all right? Step it up on the sticks, Jim. It'll be all right, though. But you do have EE, you do have Cosmos, and we're going to talk about a couple different things uh, for this episode. Cosmos, I'm going to start with you because you, unfortunately, uh, man, you just can't help but get upset at Momocon. Boy, I tell you, last year in Cinderor, this year, I don't even and remember Kong. who was it. This was it. Donkey Kong. No, last year was Incineroar and Donkey Kong. I, I, it's funny because Light and I both lost to, to Donkey Kong at Momo Cons. So it's funny. Last year he was making fun of me for it. Dang, that's uh, tough. Karma comes karma, back at you quick, man. Well, who did you lose to this year? Let's go through your run a little this bit. Let's year, talk about it. This year I lost to Mugen and Winners. Mugen's good. Um, game game five. Not really last. It was last stock, and I definitely could have won the, the the game, but I was really high. He was not. Um, but he was playing very well. He definitely was practicing the matchup with Cola because Cola has an Aegis and everything. So the fact that Cola plays Roy and Aegis definitely gave him an edge on how to play the matchup. But oh, what is this? I saw a call. Huh? <laughs> Did you just wake up? No, I'm sick. Oh, well, you were live doing lights out right now. At 11 p.m. Yeah. Well, bro, we gotta get uh, we gotta get these lights out episodes in, my brother. That's how it goes. What happened to us? <laughs> you you want to talk about what happened at Momocon real quick? That's a good question. <laughs> uh, I've been set up. You have, huh? Hey, tell us about that run, baby. <laughs> nah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Lights. <laughs> yeah, he did it. He did the thing. He did the thing. 
All right. So, what do you want to know about my bracket? I don't, yeah, what happened, bro? What happened to the three peat? Uh, first of all, suck a dick. <laughs> <laughs> second, second of all, uh, I'll tell you what happened to the three peat. I shouldn't have been there. I should oh. not have been there at all. Both of us shouldn't have been there. Yeah, I mean, me and you kind of expressed it to each other, like, day negative one, like on Thursday. Um, it was not the best time for me to be there. For one, I've been very stressed about just a lot of stuff at home, as you guys know, my housing situation. So I wasn't the most, like, I haven't been ready to play. And this goes far past MumbleCon. This was as far as Gommel, too. I feel like Gommel, no one thought that because I lost to Big D and Sonics. And, you know, those losses, they pass as excusable losses you know so it's like oh it's like even at your best light can lose to big d and socks which is true even at my best i can lose to both those players but i just conveniently lost to them when i did i did not play good at that tournament you know Mm. and i was not very confident there but it really showed this weekend where i was playing about the same way i was playing there and uh i just lost to kobe and chunky kong and i just wasn't like even in the sets I won, you could see me visually frustrated. I was very frustrated the entire tournament, and you could look back at my scat set. You could look back for whenever I was in stream, except for doubles, and I was just not mentally like prepared for the event. I was not physically prepared for the event. So, uh, yeah, I had I mean, some pretty even tough losses. Getting us doubles, we were like kind of struggling until you were telling yourself that you are going to play better. No, it's really funny, actually. Yeah, so during doubles. Me and Cosmos lost in winners, completely my fault, actually. And when we lost in winners, like midway through losers, I just look at Cosmos and I'm like, I've decided I'm going to play better because I, I don't want us to lose. And I just played very good yeah, from there. Every single but game you played better. It, yeah, and it, it's easier to do that in doubles, obviously. You know, there's more yeah. tension in singles. But um, yeah, no, I was very fed up with my play before I even got to like Kobe. I was just very disappointed in how I was playing and friendlies everywhere. So at this point, I was just my own biggest enemy. I couldn't. I was just frustrated. I was done. I was done before the tournament started. And I just you could see it in my results. I'm very disappointed. But at the same time, there was like a sense of relief. Like when I was out of bracket, I went to I went to my hotel room and I was just like, wow, like. This doesn't feel as bad as it should have feel should have felt. Like I was just relieved that it was over. Like I'm so done with Smash right now. I just need to get my life together. And then once I get my life together, I can come back and, you know, be happy and stuff. But yeah, Smash is just not really applying any happiness to my life right now as long as I'm like frustrated at home. It's just I don't have enough time to practice and commit the way other players are. So that's kind of where I'm at. Damn. Wait, are you gonna take like a cola extended break because he was gone for like six months. I am not playing this game until I move. I don't care how long that is. Damn. I'll probably play casually. No local, but like maybe I'm not sure yet. I was supposed to go practice today, and I said if I go, I'm just not playing box because that's where all the frustration happens. But uh, yeah. I feel like the only time I played good was versus Cosmos, but uh, it's like a weird thing. It's like when you play your happens when you pl- when you play your like f- like training partner, it's not even really about playing good. It's like, oh, well, I know what he's going to do. So it's like you don't really have to you don't have to free flow as much. You know, you don't really have to be on point. If I know what you're going to do, I don't have to really think about it. You know, I also didn't mind losing to Cosmos, which is probably why I played better. If you know what I mean? Like. If you don't mind losing to someone, it's just kind of like, a, well, I mean, you're not really going to have the pressure of losing on your mind. That's fair. Yeah, that's, that's very fair. I I, I think the um, OK, so I mean, you know, I just want to say that that loss to Kobe, I, I, I hate it for you, not because just because you're my buddy, but the fact that that nigga didn't do shit with it, even he didn't even get top eight. It's like, bro, come on. I'm like, I hate when people get these upsets and they don't do nothing with them. I mean, yeah, the Kobe sub upset me the most, too. I usually I had this bad habit where sometimes when I lose in winner's bracket, when I feel like it's like just because myself, I usually like just don't care about losers. It happened to me. at watch the throne. So like when I lost to Chunky Kong, I literally was just like, whatever. I was still caught up on my Kobe loss. And uh, yeah, it's unfortunate that he didn't do anything with it. But I saw a lot of comments. It was like uh, 
a lot of people were like, oh, yeah, like this character is super mashy, like on Fox as well. So it's like it's like weird seeing the character get mashed on, like seeing Fox get mashed on. And I don't, all these comments just pissed me off because I'm like, no, no, no. Shut the fuck up. Young Link can't do that. I'm just letting him do that because I suck right now. Like, this is not a Young Link thing. I just suck, but I hate Damn. that shit. I you hate... know it's a problem, and you need a break when you're letting the Reddit gens get to you, bro. It's time to take no, a break. bro. Every that's the thing, though. It's like when you're frustrated. Like Twitter is a good example for this. It's like when you're frustrated about like real life shit, and Twitter frustrates you. It's like, damn, bro, you need a break. Roll it up. Yeah, bro. I need to just. I just need to get some me stuff together. On the bright side, though. Uh, I told side. Phil about it. Yes, yeah, I told Phil about it, and you could probably tell Cosmos about it in private. Yep. But there are some good news coming that will really help motivate me and another player who you'll hear about when the time comes. And I think when this happens, I'm just going to be very happy and very determined. So, yeah. yes, okay. our our NA Avengers storyline is still alive and kicking. Chat, this is just the part of the movie where the heroes are down. OK, you got to stay tuned for the climax. The comeback, baby, is going to be bigger than you've ever imagined. All right. Trust me when I tell you that. Um, also, real quick, I just got to talk some shit. So you got to be back on here again. Let's go. I saw people saying I lost a Chunky Kong and it's like that the something like cause I don't know where you started this any Avenger stuff. I've been gone for a while, <laughs> but people were like. Yeah, well, like, if he's losing to, like, Chunky Kong, how is he going to do good in Japan? Bro, I would love to see 95% of the population fight Chunky Kong. Chunky Kong is genuinely a very good player and has very good counterplay. And he plays a character that no one else except for, like, one Japanese Donkey Kong pioneers. And anybody who is in that position will have very good advantages in the sense where you're only going to learn the matchup from them. You know, yeah. and I'm not saying he's I'm not saying that like he's not like that. He's just complete gimmick, because like I said, he's very fundamentally sound. Like this dude walks a lot and shit. And it's very scary. Like, I'm just saying that fucking Chucky Kong is an amazing player. And I bet you that a lot of stuff that Japanese Donkey Kong does, he can do as well. You know, like he's it's not just because. I don't know. I'm frustrated. I'm sick. I want to die. <laughs> I got so much on my mind, but I can't express it right now because I'm bedridden. <laughs> it's okay, man. You listen. It's it's all good. I I did want to get your. I mean, if you don't mind, I did want to get your thoughts a little bit about the Momocon top eight. If, if you didn't mind sticking around for a couple more minutes. That shit was trash without me. That's all you needed to know. And no offense to Raph, but he only won because I didn't get to him. I would like to speak very fondly if you guys wouldn't mind from the heart because you guys know i watched that top eight i commentated that top four and let me tell you something chat and you can quote me on this and you can send it to whoever the fuck you want because i'm gonna say it i was about five minutes away from calling the fbi and reporting a terrorist in the momocon venue because wrath was in that bracket like fucking isis terrorizing players the stream chat and the audience. It was ridiculous. I couldn't believe it. The only saving grace was Grand Finals was a 3-0. But that nigga knew exactly what he was doing. Absolute degeneracy. It might have been. But it was. He made it quick, but it was insane. He knew what he was doing. He knew what he was doing. I'm not mad at him for playing to win. I'm not. I'm never mad at a man for playing to win. But good God Almighty, he, if he don't got a sponsor by now, somebody hit up ISIS. Get them. Okay, Jesus. that's too far. Jesus. But <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> he's out of control. <laughs> like your thoughts on the top eight? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Uh yeah, the top eight was whack. Um Hola fucking sucks because I'm tired of Hola not stepping up when I step down. I need him to start doing that again. So, I think it was really uh, yeah. funny that when all the seeds because Tweak didn't go and then all the top five seeds ended up falling really early and Cola was fourth seed and he still just ended up 
placing his seed, even though all the other seeds weren't there. That was crazy. That makes me very upset, actually, yeah, to hear that's, that information. That's, like, depressing. I don't know. These events happen every so often where the top seeds just get jammed, but it's okay. You'll be talking about us at the next event when we're in the top eight. That's kind of what I... Yeah. You know, I, I do want to give a shout-out, though, because there are two people I was very happy for. Jazo, just because I think Jazo is, even though he's a little gym, I think he's got a really good head on his shoulders. He's positive. He just wants to do well. I want to give a shout out to him. And Wilds, man. Wilds, a young gun, young cat. You know what I'm saying? Coming out of nowhere and getting third. Kudos to Wilds, too, man. Like, I know, you know, Chunky Kong and did his thing. Beast Mo Paul, Mega, Cola. Could have won, but he's a gym. But I thought Wilds. I was happy for Wilds. It was nice to see a young cat like that do well. So, shout out to Wilds. Um, this man just complimented two FGC characters. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> that's real shit. That's crazy, bro. We're, I'm not complimenting the characters. I'm complimenting the young talent. Good job, right? guys, for finally being able to successfully land on people's shield. <laughs> you, you are a hateful man today. I like it. Uh, bedridden. He's bedridden. Uh, you, know what I realized? you know what I realized being away from the podcast and getting away from all this content and all this shit that's and it. just being around myself for so long? I realize, bro. I don't care about. I don't care about how America does. I don't care about how Japan does. I don't care about how Mexico does. I give a fuck about any y'all niggas. I only care about how I do, bro. So honestly, wait, are we on a sponsored stream? Yes. I, I'm supposed to know this. Okay, the story about line. any y'all. The story about line. any y'all ninjas. This man said the storyline. Story oh, I'm getting out of here, bro. Oh, God. Wait, did you? We were going to discuss the characters that are currently ruining the Smash meta. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> You've had enough. You've had enough. Sick. He has had enough. Look, I get it, man. I get it. Like, I need you to know something. When you come back, I'm betting on you to take care of business. All right, but. But you don't know when you're coming back. I mean, hopefully sooner than later. Like when I say this, I'm putting a like I, I gotta be strict on this, but like I can't like if it takes longer than a month, it takes longer than a month. I just gotta stick to it, you know? That's facts. We want light up, we want him at a nice setup, we want him with his camera on, and we want him not sick, chat. We want him not sick. Well, before I let you get out of here, okay, I do want to ask you. How was your general Atlanta experience outside of Momocon? How'd you like Atlanta? Well, even including Momocon, I love Momocon. I love what they do for the community. I love how they have us every year. Yep. That's an amazing event. I have a great time at Momocon. And then outside of Momocon, I had a great time with the boys, man. I mean, a lot of my friends don't go to tournaments anymore. So to have a bunch of my friends at Momocon was an amazing time and definitely made my loss a little less saltier. Yeah. I actually don't remember the last time I saw Charles. I think it's been a minute. It was Level Up Expo. Oh, so it's a month. Okay, it actually wasn't that long. Yeah, what the hell? If anything, it was like a long time since I've seen Bam. Bam, yeah. I haven't seen Bam in a while. Yeah, I see him. Yeah. Being around. It's not even just seeing people. It's just seeing everybody like at the same time, you know? Exactly, bro. It felt good to be back. It felt good to be together. And. Results aside, it was just it's always like a family gathering. If you notice, those events are getting a little few and far between when we'll all be together, I've noticed. So you got to keep that in mind. You got to make the most out of them, you know? Yo, Cosmos, I'm going to ask you a crazy-ass question. <laughs> yeah. I thought about this, like, as it was happening, but I don't know how you would have took it, so I didn't do it. Is so, like... You playing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like... As I felt like, because you know I me, mean, I have an ego sometimes, like even when I'm losing. Uh, there was just a certain point in the set where like, I felt like I was going to win, right? But like, I only kept playing. I, bro, I was so like mentally frustrated. Like it's, I haven't been this mentally frustrated in a long time. I could easily I only, tell. Yeah, I know. I only kept playing because I was fighting you. And you know, I always want to beat my friends because I just ego thing, you know? But I didn't want to keep going. So, like, at one point when I was beating you, I was like, am I allowed to, like, because I felt like you were going to do better than me. Because I felt like you only lost because it was me, you know? 
And it could have gone either way even then. You only lost that game because you got overzealous, right? Yeah. So, like, I was just thinking. I was like, if I win, am I allowed to, like... Just DQ, like Cosmos, yeah, just DQ and let Cosmos keep going. And I legitimately thought to do that. And I was like, I don't want Cosmos to think I'm disrespecting them. So I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. But like, I really wanted to do that. And then I was yeah. like, at one point I was like, I could just lose. And I was like, nah, but I don't think he would want me to let him win either. Cause that's fucked up. So I was like, fuck, I should have DQ before. I mean, Damn. shit. At, at this point, it's been two losses. I got top eight. I'll take anything I can get. <laughs> but I, I gotta ask: if I if I beat you and I and then I DQ to just let you go, would you have been mad at me? No, because I knew you were you were frustrated. But I I would have been like, I would have been upset that it shows up on my player card, that it shows up that. I mean, I I don't know if it would have shown up. Actually, I, 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 I would have been pretty upset. I would have just said you 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 should DQ before if you don't want to play. Yeah, I would say like you 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 take you DQ before you guys play, not like throwing any games or oh I won, but I actually want to let him go through. No, you should have just made that decision beforehand. Yeah, because yeah, then like, nobody's I, gonna hold I, it I against know that, you. Like I I would have been like on the fence. Like I mean, I don't really care that much. It still sucks, but I know that everybody else would have cared way more than either of us. That's very true. A lot of people would have cared way too much. I don't know. I don't see a world where I would have DQ'd prior just because I wanted to fight you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, but all right. I, think, I just I, was wondering. I think that's, that's good, too. That is good. Right. Are you sticking all around, right. White, or are you leaving? Uh, I probably should go. I'm dying, and I think I've talked a lot for five minutes. Okay, well, before you leave, just tell me, give me your top three characters that are currently ruining the Smash meta. Give me your top Oh, three. man. Uh, Steve, Sonic, and... Yeah, man, that's it. What else do you need? No Game & Watch? Nah, Game & Watch isn't ruining the meta, because Game & Watch is like... Game & Watch is annoying as hell, but... I feel like there's been getting more counterplay for Game & Watch. And the thing about Game & Watch is, like, they're super oppressive, but they're not camping. Camping is what kills our meta, mm. or, like, what kills our game, you know? Like, Game & Watch is, like, all over you, and it's really annoying. But I think a lot of people don't know how to fight Game & Watch still. Like, even me, myself, I've been learning a lot, and I have a winning record against every Game & Watch that's a top player this year, you know? So it's, like, I just think people are, like, inexperienced in that matchup because they're not around a lot. But Sonic... And Steve, it's like the ability to just go in and out whenever you want and to actually benefit from camping is just insane with these characters. And I mean, Sonic's is one of the most he is one of the most uh, grind heavy players in this entire game. So you've got to give him credit where credit is due. But still, like seeing how far he's able to push his character I don't think some characters are able to go that far, you know, and yeah. like he's pushing past an area that most characters just can't get. And that character is really, really campy and very stupid because. OK, yeah, okay, but, go on. but but what about this? Because I think I would agree with you on, on those two, because I the characters I would say is Steve, Sonic and Kazuya. But let's let's just take out the fact that you are one of the players that are very good against Kazuya. Obviously, you're one of the players that's very good against Steve and Sonic 2, mainly Sonic. But um, Kazuya, maybe not even like at the top, top level, but just at a general level, I feel like it's very frustrating for a lot of people to play just because of like the way that he plays and the the intensity and the stress that you feel whenever you can get hit once. Like, do you what would you feel like Kazuya would be a good third character to think of as well? First of all, I have the chat up, so Phil, shut the fuck up. Oh, shit! Um, <laughs> uh, but second of all, literally only the last sentence. Can you repeat that, Cosmos? Um, would you think that Kazuya is one of the characters, one of the characters that could be in the top three that is very frustrating to fight on all levels, not just like the top level? Um, once you put it like that and with your description, I completely agree with you. The, the character can kill the game in the sense where it's like... <laughs> Characters, he's like a character. It's like, well, you don't even really need to be good. He has heavy damage output. You can consistently yeah. drop the uh, EWGF combo, and they'll and still they'll be at sixty percent. Yeah, they'll still be at sixty percent, and then also they'll just like 
they're hard to kill. They don't struggle to kill. If they do struggle to kill, they have a command grab that kills. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And the character and the character can cause upsets, especially if you're not mentally yeah. sound, you know. And if you play a brawler, you know, it's even easier to create upsets. And you're not mentally sound. It's just like they could do that. I actually would put Kazuya as the third, especially since I just don't see any character who's being that senseless. You know, Min Min is like, I guess, a character who could be a contender. But the only reason. Yeah, I was going to say the only reason Min Min is not there is not because the character can't do it. It's just no one's pioneering that meta as much anymore. Right. Yeah. Except but, the, the, the top, top players, because there's no like. There are some, but there's not as many mid-level or high-level or mid-level Min-Mins as, like, the other three characters, essentially. It's also just a bit biased, because, I mean, I only... Like, that's more of a Japan thing with Min-Min, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's well, Like, that's, yeah. I don't feel that here, so it's a little biased. But, like, you know what I do feel in Japan? Sonic and Steve. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. You ain't wrong about it's, that, man. Yeah, but, um... I don't know. I think Kazi would definitely be number three. I completely agree. But I do think it'd be like Steve, Sonic, Gap, Kazuya. Right. Steve, Sonic, Gap, yeah. Kazi. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, like yeah. your feedback is super appreciated. Your time is appreciated as well. And of course, everybody here on the podcast and the chat is hoping that you feel better and uh, can get you up and running when you're ready, man. Take your time and do what's best for you. No joke. All jokes aside, man. Take care of yourself first and foremost, bro. Who we care about? These con gyms need to wear a mask. I don't know what to tell them. I agree. Yep. And brush their oh, teeth. Man. I don't get it. They can. I have such a wild statement. I was about to say, "Oh my god!" <laughs> I could tell. I could even. I was about to cut you off too. He's ready to go off. Take it easy. You can undress everywhere you want, just not in the face. Cover up. <laughs> <laughs> There's, that applies to a lot of people, actually. If, you, yeah, if you're there, you're there, Chad. If you're there, you're there. Uh, I gotta go. <laughs> but Light, thank you for your time, and we'll be talking to you real soon, bud. Peace. Peace. Well, oh, I, can, I clicked the wrong button. I'm a gym. You're a gym, huh? There you go. Great to have Light stop by. You know, I'm sure that was a great surprise for the Lights Out faithful who watch every week. And guess what? It was a surprise for us, too. <laughs> we didn't know that was showing up. Not mad about it. Definitely uh, glad he was able to. But Light gave us his opinions. Uh, Cosmos, do you share the exact same ones? If, or is it just Steve, Sonic, and Kazi are for you? Are those the meta killers? Yeah, I mean, honestly, for literally everything he said, mm. besides the, like, like if I won, I would not have dropped out, obviously. But but like everything else he, he said, like I feel like that tournament was not the tournament for us. Like I feel like we both need, needed a break. I feel like not a lot of people needed a, a break. Um, and I do feel like top eight was pretty boring. I feel like top eight would have been much more exciting if all of us were in it because the top seeds were pretty interesting and would have been interesting to watch play against each other, especially if Tweak were, were to have uh, gone. Um, but the fact that it was basically littered with sonic steve and kazia basically running the entire top eight and top four maybe i'm not sure what place the steve got maybe fifth or fourth or something no he got fifth riku so, got um, fifth yeah so yeah it's it's getting pretty re redundant watching both are all those characters now which is why i brought up kazia too because obviously um riddles is a cool player but he plays kazuya and like at some point how many times do we want to watch kazuya hit you once and deal 120 damage even if they don't kill you in one hit yeah. um so and it's like it's it's not even that it does that that happens it's the fact that because all of the players know about that happening they have to play very slow and play very campy so that they don't get hit by that which is what makes the game pretty boring and dragged out to watch so those that's why those three characters kazuya makes other players do it sonic does it to every other players and then steve can do either essentially he can do it and he can make other players do it so that's why those three characters are probably the most frustrating to watch and are ruining the smash meta well, let me tell you something i got a big feel got a little bit of a different take okay as i <laughs> tend to now sonic look I'm going to speak in facts, okay, above feelings, because I love Sonics. It's my guy. 
my homie, and I love his grind. But yes, his character typically is just the, the Smash community in large, like 85 to 90 percent of people hate Sonic. It is what it is. It is what it is. So Sonic has to be on the list. Steve, for the simple fact that I've I've actually been seeing the Steve aggressors or you know agitators have been getting more aggressive. Like this neutralist skill is Jim. How did he make top eight? Or how did he beat my favorite? Or how did I lose to him? You know, I see people saying this stuff all the time in more flux as of lately. I get it. Steve's a tough character to deal with, man. He's, he's you know what I'm saying? He's a character I was looked at as a joke when he came out. And he started figuring out some things. And he was like, oh, this, this, this he ain't a joke because ain't nobody laughing anymore. This shit is terrible. I get it. My third slot is going to be a culmination of characters. Okay, and what do I mean by that? I mean this. Mid-tiers. Mid-tier <laughs> characters are ruining the Smash matter. Now, what do you mean by that? Well, Phil, what are you saying by that? What do you mean by that? Well, allow me to explain why I feel this way. Okay? Think about it like this. Even as recently as what just happened at Momocon, White loses to Kobe. Playing what? A mid-tier character. That's basically what Young Link is. Let's call it what it is. Maybe top of mid-tier or whatever. His ass ain't doing that. You can say he's not mid-tier. I think he's mid-tier. That's my opinion, okay? Boom. Beats Light. What does he do with that? Nothing. Squanders it away. Doesn't make top eight. Sends Light the losers where he has to face off against one of his best friends, Cosmos, and inevitably Chunky Kong. Now, credits to Chunky Kong for potting in the mid-tier and making it hype on his run to top eight. Love him for that, okay? But that's an outlier. Let's go over to Japan. What happened? Think about that tournament. What did you guys hate? Oh, my goodness. Me and a cola again. Why is this happening? Because Spar goes out of the tournament because you got Banjo-Kazooie and Donkey Kong taking him out. And what do they do with those Toon victories? Link. It, or Toon Link. What are, you know, I'm talking about both of the tournaments, Delta and Kagaribi. But what do they do? You got Toon Link taking them out, Donkey Kong taking them out, Banjo-Kazooie taking them out. And what do they do with those Ws? Nothing. So you got a player who can threaten those toxic-ass characters. I mean, he has the most experience against the best Sonic out there. He shreds through Game & Watches. He threads through Steve's, and he can't get to him because he's mid-tier gems Get in the way. The answer is clear. It's not as clear cut, but it is what it is. Gyms, a.k.a. mid-tiers. Yeah. Your, your thoughts. I mean, that's true. I mean, that's completely true. The way I call them is I call them one-and-done characters, one-and-done tournament characters, because they're just trying to get the one upset, and then they're done. They don't care. They, they don't care if they win the tournament. They don't care if they go further in the bracket. As long as they get that one upset, that's their that's their highlight of the, the exactly. tournament, and they're satisfied for the rest of the weekend. And that's the it's problem. Nice. It's the same thing back in the day. If you played Yu-Gi-Oh!, you know what I'm talking about with burn decks or stall decks or, you know what I'm saying, final countdown, all kind of crazy, crappy decks like that. You had to get through that sea of those decks the first, like, maybe two or three rounds until you play the meta decks. You know what I'm saying? You get to the meta decks, that's what your deck is ready for. That's what your side deck is ready for, the stuff that matters, not these cheap Parlor tricks, these one trick ponies out here stealing victories from good players because you want to cry matchup experience. 80 some characters in this game, it's impossible to know every matchup. It's impossible. You got to do your best. Some of y'all got to concede that, dang, maybe I can get lucky against Sparkle here. Oh man, next round is me. I ain't got a shot there. Just let it go, you know? Let's let, just let it go. That's just, you know, that's just my opinion. That's just what I've observed over these couple of tournaments, you know what I'm saying? And how we've seen. Some of our best soldiers who actually are equipped to handle some of these toxic meta killing characters slaying early. But, you know, just giving my uh, my two cents. Uh, but I would I, I would bet on the fact that we're probably going to see at some point, Cosmos, a resurgence. And that won't be the case forever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When the new game comes out. Exactly. Well, let me tell you something. It ain't a new deal, but it's one that you should be familiar with. I'm talking about. Prize picks, baby. It's time to talk about the best because they beat all the rest and hold it down. Now, look, Prize Picks, as you all know, is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 5 million members. It's the most fun, exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less than two or more player stats for a shot that went up to 100 times your cash. Oh, D. Come on now. May is a huge month for esports, and so is June, which is coming up. And it's all on prize picks. Cash in on the exciting sports action this spring. 
Counter-Strike, League of Legends, Call of Duty, NBA playoffs. Baby, I know it's not esports, but some of those gyms probably play Apex or something. I'm testing my skills right now on prize picks this season. I won so much money betting on the mask, it's ridiculous. And I want you to do the same thing. So download the app today. Use code lights out for your first deposit match for up to a hundred dollars. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with prize picks. Ah! Are you picking, Cosmos? Are you picking? Or are you nigging? Picking. There's a difference, man. What? Huh? I'm what? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm picking. I'm not doing that. Look at that. <laughs> I just ask, I'm just asking a question, bro. I'm just asking a question. Shout out to our friends at Prize Picks. Well, uh, there was another tournament that took place too. I guess I should give the nod to as well. Combo Breaker. I don't know if you kept up with that at all. I would see little updates on it from my phone, and uh, I think that tournament was won by Onan, if I'm not mistaken. So, shout out oh. to Onan for winning that. And then Mutates won a tournament over there in Texas. Some sort okay, of so Mutates won that tournament. That, yeah, that Comic tournament. Palooza tournament was it? Comic Palooza, comic Palooza. Or something? right? Yeah, they 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 actually invited me to go to that tournament because they wanted it to be an A tier, but obviously I already had the obligation of going to MomoCon. But it did seem like there were some pretty heavy hitters there because I know Shattuck was there, Lima was there, um, I think Louis Money and some other players as well, like Peepna, I think might have been there. Don't quote me on that. I didn't get to watch it obviously because, because I was at Mom- MomoCon. Um, but yeah, it seemed. Like it was pretty stacked, so it's pretty good for Mutis to win tournaments. I feel like Mutis always does well at tournaments like that that are um like high B tier, low A tier. That's like a super re- regional. Like, yeah. I feel like he thrives in those kinds of environments. Yeah, I think I uh, and shout out to Louis Money. Louis Money has a very big track record of kind of going to those tournaments, those regionals, and just always winning. Didn't win this one because Mutis just teared through the bracket, but Louis got Did second there. Second? Louis got oh, second okay. there. So I thought that as notable, two other notable placements. Peep Nun, Captain Cito sharing fifth, and then Tilde getting seventh place. So, I oh, believe- apparently Shattuck wasn't there. Oh, damn. Yeah, Shattuck was not at that event. Uh, Shattuck was okay. not at that event, which is surprising because it's a Texas event. But, you know, I mean, yeah. it was it, it was Memorial Day weekend. Young man might have some family plans. He wanted him to do what he wants. The biggest surprise to me was Lima getting ninth place because this guy named Luke Warm was just a K rule player, apparently, was just shitting on kids. He took out Louie, he took out Lima. I'm like, what the heck? Took out some guy named Ploopy, uh, who got oh, fourth Kirby place. Kid. Oh, Luke Warm is Kirby kid. Yeah. Oh, that Kirby explains is, that. Okay, yeah. okay, he does okay. King K role player. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, carry okay, yeah. We know, we know. Well, we know who Kirby kid is. Kirby kid is yeah. is immaculate. Uh, good at multiple games too. Okay, so that's awesome. Yeah. Well, good stuff to. Uh, that was really cool to see, man. Glad to see Kirby kid back in the fold. Uh, making some ways and just wanted to give a nod to those two tournaments uh, as well because they happen. So. We hear it lights out. We acknowledge them. That's just how it gets down. Um, something else I want to acknowledge, though, Cosmos. Uh, and you know what? At the time, this kind of convened that recording this a little bit later than usual because at the time of this recording, I took place in multiverses for Twitch Rivals. Sure, oh, a lot yeah. of you guys. How did that go? It went well. Me and Bam, uh, we got third in our group, and uh, we we got matched up with the second seed uh, in the uh, in the tournament in the single elimination bracket. Took them to game three last ring out or whatever and they got us at the end but uh we played pretty well for not you know not teaming at all i was happy with i used wonder woman he used a combination of harley and black adam which was a lot of fun um but i know you're playing in a multiverse event uh coming up tomorrow i think you're teamed up with sandstorm yeah i'm i'm playing in the challenger version challengers of, yep um of twitch rivals multiverse multiverse twitch rivals yeah and that's gonna be i believe also 16 man or eight man actually eight teams Eight teams. Eight teams. And um, it's going to be a double elimination bracket. Yep. So I'm actually, after this podcast, I believe I'm going to be playing with Sam Storm. I'm probably going to be streaming it. So we're going to be practice, practicing for that event. And we're going to hopefully take it. Um, I know that I'm pretty sure Void is entering it, too. I Void's in it, yeah. I saw I saw Sonic Fox's name there or something. Um, I, I, I saw a lot of pretty good players. Obviously, like, the top, top multiverse player, like, mirror man and stuff like that are going to be there too so it's going to be a pretty good watch for like the very first big old or very first best competitive multiverses tournament um that happens after the games launch for sure now i've seen a lot of like mixed opinions on multiverses right now and i just thought i would check in with you since you know you're very talented at multiple smash titles which means you're just talented at platform fighters in general thoughts yeah. on multiverse i know you're playing batman 
clear difference from the beta. You know, characters are a little larger. The gameplay has certainly slowed down. They've implemented some new things like dash attacks and parries, which I think are cool. But uh, from your perspective as a pro player, what do you think about this current iteration of multiverses? And uh, will it have the staying power? Is it just like a week or two long a hype? What do you think? Um, I think I think this game is actually going to, at the very least, last longer than it did before. Um, because a lot of people are complaining about how like it's a lot slower and stuff like that, and like, yeah. it's a lot different. Um, and I feel like a lot of people are a lot worse at it now because they're trying to play it similar to the way that it was played uh, in the beta. But I feel like this version is. I'm not necessarily going to say it's better i and i personally enjoy it more and the reason is because i feel like i can understand and see a lot more of what's happening and it's not just put up to, to chance because i feel like the beta was put up to chance a lot more um and this this version of the game i feel like whenever i hit someone i actually have an advantage state and a disadvantage state mm. um there's actually with punishing in in the game because i feel like in the beta people had like no lag it was like way way worse than ultimate lag um i feel like because people could actually cancel basically like all their attacks and like cancel like mid attack mid smash charge into like roll and they would just roll dodge jump across the entire stage and just basically reset neutral yeah, they were if, moving if you can even call it neutral yeah um and they would do that out of disadvantage too so there was no real like advantage or disadvantage because you would hit them and they would just roll jump to the other side of the stage and then you would just have to reset and replay and then just try to use your big hitbox and hope that it hits them because you don't know where the hitbox really is. So I do think that they fix a lot of things like the, the hurt boxes are a lot more obvious. Like if you hit somebody, it makes more sense. There's actual trading. So if you trade with somebody, it makes sense when you do trade. Um, and um, there are definitely some things that I would change about the game. Like I do feel like hit lag could be a little bit slower. I do feel like... Um, um, you could have a little bit more resources, but I do think I do like the fact that they are adding things like more defensive options like parrying, because I do feel like parrying is an actual um, consistent option that you can get based on how you see your opponent is playing. Um, and there are just like little things like that that I do like and feel like make the game more intricate and more add more depth to the game, essentially, which I feel like is what multiverses was lacking in the beta. So I do think it's come a long way from the, the beta. Yeah. But one thing that I do like a lot is that um, they've even tweeted out or posted on Reddit that they're paying attention to like their criticism and stuff. And they've noticed that like people are saying that the game is too slow and like they didn't, they don't like this and they don't like that. And um, they are saying that like they are going to fix that in the future. And that is what they're going to focus on um, first and foremost. I do like the fact that, you know, and to multiverses credit, WB's credit, They've always had a like whoever's in charge of like the game and reworks and stuff like that. They've always been pretty open on Twitter. Like I remember Tony back, you know, when the game was first out, he would reply and answer a lot of people sometimes to a fault because I feel like he would change things just based off specific tweets, you know, just to appease somebody. But it would end up like maybe pissing off five people. You know what I mean? So it's really it's hard to find that balance as a game dev. I sympathize with that uh, or as somebody who understands, you know, what game devs go through. I sympathize with that. So I get it. That's a lot to deal with for sure. I think with this new iteration, having people like AJ or Ajax and like the cat involved in it, like clearly more heavily and not just, I mean, you know, you look at their Twitter, just tweeting, like sound like bots, but they actually do have like a legit hand in it. I think that's a <laughs> great thing. Do. They really do. I think that's a great thing though. So I think, although my, maybe not everything can be addressed immediately. I almost feel like this is basically like, they're just giving you another beta um, and they're just going to keep patching along the way. You know, I feel like. You know, aside from Smash, which will, of course, have its patches here and there, like these platform fighters often don't come out like complete. They don't feel like they're fully complete games. So, you know, you just kind of got to roll with the punches, give feedback where, you know, where you feel like it's appropriate and where it matters and uh, let the chips fall where they may. So me personally, I think the game is cool. Um, You know, where will it be? You know, where where will it be in a month? I couldn't tell you, but uh, as long as they're actually committed to, you know, taking you know, feedback that's obviously relevant and uh, comes from a good place. I think they'll do just fine, man. I'm certainly not rooting against them. So uh, that's our yeah. our multiverses takes uh, for sure. And good luck to you in Twitch Rivals Cosmos. Um, before we wrap this episode, you know what we got to talk about, man. It's getting down to the wire. This is for all our, our black folks out there who watch the show. I promised your NBA segments all throughout the playoffs. We're going to keep doing that weekly. Current update, Pacers, boom. They are out of the playoffs. 
the asses really should have never been there, or certainly at least not as deep as they went. I'm not going to lie to you. That healthy Knicks team destroys that Pacers team, but they got through the Knicks. It's swept by the Celtics. Not a gentleman's sweep, a straight-up sweep. They got swept. Granted, you know, all the chatter about the Celtics having the easiest path to the finals. I don't think it's overstated because a lot of these teams, even though they're not the teams you expect them to play, they've been without their best players. Like there's Injuries have really plagued the Eastern Conference, I feel like. You look yeah. at Giannis, you look at Dame, Halliburton in those last two games, Donovan Mitchell in that last two games. Uh, obviously, everybody you know, on the freaking Knicks, Joel Embiid. So there's been a lot of hardships that the Eastern Conference has had. The Celtics, though, look, I look, you got to play who's in front of you. They stayed injury-free besides Porzingis. Congratulations, they're in the finals. But on the Western Conference, and I think whoever comes out the West is going to win personally, you got uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves, who just avoided yesterday getting swept by the Dallas Mavericks. Okay, so they're on the Damn. board, but it's still 3-1. No team has ever came back from 3-1. I'm feeling like the Celtics put or the the Mavs put this shit away and they should be favored going into the NBA finals. Your thoughts, Cosmos? I agree. Honestly, I feel like just throughout this playoff series and I feel like it's that's this is like why it didn't really work out last year for for the Mavs because obviously they didn't make it into the, the playoffs. I don't even think they made the play-ins, right? I think they missed missed that last year too. Who the Mavs? Um, yeah, the Mavs had yeah. a down year last year trying to fit Kyrie in. It was a completely yeah. different but like, situation. As as a competitor, I know like as a com competitor, learning something new, the the best way to put it into to practice is in a very intense in environment, and like that's the best way to get accustomed to something. And I sure. feel like that is the reason why Luca and Kyrie are getting so much synergy now is because they are put in basically life or death scenarios. Or like like for their team essentially, whereas like they know they have to play well and they have to play well to together in order to basically win the entire thing. And they don't just have like one game versus one team. They have or one game versus mul mul multiple teams. They have like multiple games against one team where they can play a game and then review it and be like, oh, we should have done this here, 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 there, there, there. And then they can go into the next game and then actually execute it. So yeah. I feel like that's one of the reasons why they're actually able to get a lot of synergy like at a very huge snowball rate and i feel like that's just going to keep on going on throughout the entire playoffs which is why i think they're going to end up winning because i don't think i don't think anybody on the celtics team is going to end up stopping them i don't think the minutes the timberwolves although they are a very very good team i don't think they can yeah. i don't think any team has won um when they've been down there's never you know. been in the conference final a reverse like if you're 3-0 down you don't win that yeah. Um, and it might happen at some point in our lifetime because we still got a lot of life to live, God willing. Um, but I don't think it's happening this time. I think the Mavs take care of business in the next encounter. And when we have the next lights out, we'll be previewing who we think is going to win in the finals between the Celtics and the Mavs. We'll see what happens. But uh, that's our take right there when it comes to NBA. Guys, I'm sure a lot of you watch NBA or maybe you're in a country or region that doesn't really allow for it. It's like, oh, man, I just I don't want to watch highlights. I want to watch the games. You know what I'm saying? I got the perfect solution for you. Surfshark VPN, baby. A coffee priced offer for a premium VPN. Four months extra right here. Just use that link that's going to be in the description of this video. Because guess what? That link, bam, baby. It's my link, in fact. That's right. Secure your privacy with Surfshark. Enter the coupon code EVSUVPN for an extra four months extra. Just click on the link below. I promise you, chat, is going to be good. Use the SMH point VPN in the Twitch chat as well if you're lucky enough to be watching this live. But, uh, guys, that's going to do it for this edition of Lights Out. I certainly hope you did enjoy it. It was nice uh, to have Light stop by for about 20 minutes to give his thoughts on the meta and just his performance at Momocon and uh, update on the break situation. My boy Cosmos uh, currently relocated in Mexico, wishing him the best as he get settled out there and my black ass well i'm just still doing a lot of the same which includes asking you to like comment and subscribe since we always bring the vibes and we'll see you next week peace yeah